É, bem, pessoal, eu queria dar as boas-vindas para vocês, tá? as boas, boa, desejar uma boa noite para vocês também. É, para quem não me conhece, meu nome é Caio, eu vou estar aqui com vocês durante essa sessão, ajudando e também facilitando com vocês, junto com a Mônica. É, para quem não me conhece, eu sou o Program Manager local, o gerente de programa local aqui em São Paulo. Se essa é a sua primeira vez participando aqui do encontro do, nosso, do Reactor, o Reactor é um programa global da Microsoft que está presente em mais de 10 países ao redor do mundo. E o objetivo do programa como um todo é simplesmente ajudar vocês né, a se conectarem, a aprender novas habilidades e a criar com novas tecnologias. Então, tudo que a gente faz, a gente tenta, de alguma forma, empoderar ou ajudar você é, a aprender alguma nova habilidade e, enfim, desenvolver a sua carreira como um todo. Toda semana a gente vai promover algum conteúdo diferente, seja um workshop, palestra, painel, enfim, qualquer coisa que possa adicionar na sua carreira de alguma forma. Todos os nossos eventos são abertos, gratuitos e segue o nosso código de conduta. Falando sobre ele bem brevemente, o código de conduta da Microsoft fala muito sobre promover comportamentos e atitudes positivas. Isso inclui também os eventos do Reactor, onde a gente busca oferecer uma experiência respeitosa, amigável e profissional para todas as pessoas, independente de gênero, orientação sexual, aparência, deficiência, idade, raça ou religião. Então, se por acaso você vê um comentário, uma fala ou uma atitude que você julgue inadequada, vá ao nosso site microsoftreactor.com, lá você vai encontrar o nosso código de conduta e orientações, caso você precise de alguma ajuda. Para essa sessão em si, é, a gente vai gravar, e vocês não vão aparecer é, na gravação, é, mas a gente vai disponibilizar esse conteúdo no nosso canal no YouTube. Se vocês tiverem alguma pergunta ou quiserem comentar, a Mônica também tem algumas interações ao longo da transmissão, por favor, utilize o chat. É, se vocês precisarem, é, esse evento conta com legendas automáticas. Vocês já estão vendo aí aparecendo para vocês em inglês, é, mas a gente vai ter também em português. Beleza? E cuidado para um último comentário, só cuidado para vocês não compartilhar nenhum dado pessoal, informação sensível, tá? O conteúdo está sendo criado ao vivo. Bem, hoje a gente vai falar sobre criatividade e inovação. A ideia da sessão é concentrar né, nessa parte, nessas duas áreas, nesses dois conceitos. Então, a gente vai compartilhar algumas formas para implantar essas soluções e hábitos né, é, nas suas vidas e nos seus ambientes de trabalho. E quem vai fazer essa facilitação com vocês é a Mônica. A Mônica ela tem paixão por ajudar organizações a obter melhor é, dos seus funcionários, seja por meio de workshops, programas de coaching, programas de liderança. Ela tem mais de 19 anos de experiência na indústria é, de serviços financeiros, nas quatro grandes firmas de consultorias, como gerente de programa e projeto. Durante a sua carreira, a Mônica ela ganhou percepção e experiência na transformação de negócios e entrega de projetos em uma variedade de projetos locais e global. E é isso. É, Mônica, let's start. Sure, thank you. Thanks, Kaya, for the introduction. I'm just going to share my screen. Perfect. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Yes, I can see it. And can you see the subtitles? Yes. Yeah, I can. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to meet you today and have you on today's session where we will be talking about creativity and innovation. One of the things about creativity and innovation is that when things happen, such as the COVID pandemic, many organizations were forced to think differently. They were forced to be more creative and more innovative within their businesses to ensure that they were able to continue as a business. So in today's session, we're going to talk about this topic in more detail, and we're going to cover a number of different themes, um, which will include what does it mean to be a creative person? We'll talk through the creative process and some of the core steps that we can all follow in order to apply more creativity in the jobs that we do in our organizations and within our teams. Then we'll look at how creativity drives innovation and how the two of them worked together um, as, a, as a unit. 
we'll look at the innovation process and the key steps involved in that based on a number of studies and based on a number of theories as well. And we'll also explore what things that organizations can do, organizations and individuals can do in order to become more creative within the workplace. So without further ado, let's go straight into the content. Um, Thomas Edison said or wrote, the value of an idea lies in using it. Many times we have ideas, they stay in our minds and we think, I can have an idea, it will improve this, or if I created a new app, or if I created a new solution, it would help solve a problem, or it will help create a new product or service. When that idea remains in our heads, it's just an idea. It's when that idea is taken from what's in our minds and it's translated into a process, then it starts the journey of becoming an invention, an innovation, and eventually something which is commercial. So let's look at that in more detail. Um, one of the first things I would like you to do, and um, this is a session for you so your interaction is highly valuable and let's take a few moments to reflect please use the chat think functionality and um, provide me with some answers on the first question which is when you think of a creative idea or product what comes to mind i'll keep an eye on the chat box What kind of ideas do you think come to mind? It can be anything from a product that you really enjoy using and you feel it's very creative or even a service within your organization. So there are a number of things and I'll keep an eye on the chat as well. And some of the things that I've come across is um, maybe an application which um, I thought was really useful. For example, I enjoy gardening and there are some great apps which allows me to look at plants and tell me what that plant needs, if it needs more water or more sunlight. I think that's a really creative um, service that's offered. Um, so feel free to share your ideas in the chat box. Um, and then the second question that I have on the slide today is, do you think creativity can be learned? You can put either yes or no in the chat box. And I will be answering this this question um, in the next section of, of the of today's session. And um, so creativity, it can be learned, and the stud studies show that it can be learned. It's understanding the process and understanding what it means to be creative. So let's look at that in more detail. Now. Um, there are some definitions that I'm going to be sharing with you. The first one is to do with what is creativity and creativity is the ability to transcend traditional ways of thinking or acting and to develop new and original ideas, methods or objects. Um, these are things that um, we may do to improve the way that we work. It could be a new product or a new service. And then to take that for further, Creative thinking is the process of nurturing your imagination, allowing you to think outside of the box. Um, we are all creative in our own ways, and um, that's because we have different skills, we have different experiences, and we have different types of knowledge. So if we can use that knowledge, that skill, that experience, we can be creative in our own industries and in the work that we do. And it's really about taking that idea and turning it into a concept. So I live in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. And the reason I've put this picture here of this young, young kid with buildings in the background is because in the UAE, we have one of the tallest buildings in the world, the Burj Khalifa. And the Burj Khalifa was an idea 
It was an idea in someone's mind who wanted to create the tallest building in the world. So once they had that idea, they started to take the steps and the actions to turn an idea into a final product. It took many years, it took many conversations, and there was a lot of activities and stages involved. So that initial idea, which someone had a dream about, which was to grow have a tallest building in the world, they were ma- they were able to create the tallest building in the world. And um, that shows that an idea can turn into a final product when the actions and the steps are taken. So the next thing I wanted to focus on was about the processes that are involved um, in the whole creative process. Um, James Clear, he said that creativity is a process, not an event. Sometimes we may feel that um, we just have to be creative for a couple of hours um, and and that's it. That's all we need to do. Actually, creativity, if we go through the different steps and the different phases, it will help help us to become more creative and follow key steps um, towards success. So there are four steps which were identified by Graham Wallace, and he called them preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification. Let's go through each of those in more detail. So what do we mean by the first step? The first step is all about preparation. This is where we start to work with other people, we gather ideas, we look at potential problems that exist. So for example, if there's um, uh, uh, something in an organization which can be improved, or there's a gap in the market which a new technology can resolve, this is where the ideas start to come to mind. Um, We start to look at inspiration from within the organization and also external to the organization. And we might start to write those ideas down and start to do some idea generation work. So once we've done the preparation, then comes the incubation process. And this is where the ideas that we've created in our minds and we've discussed, they start to, we start to think about them more. We start to focus on them and um, start to put the pieces of those ideas together. Um, And here we are giving our minds and the people we are working with time to really think about how those ideas can turn into something um, which is tangible and something that can be useful. And it's about linking things together as well. So for example, if I was to create or um, I was going to improve a process within an organization to reduce the time of a process from five days to three days, that I would start to look at all the different things that have to happen. Then I would start to look at if they happened, what would the effect be? So these are the things that we would look at in the incubation phase. So once we've gone through the incubation phase, then suddenly we have that moment of inspiration with the light bulb um, is switched on. It's the aha moment. That's what many people call it when they have that moment of inspiration. They call it the aha moment. And um, this is when we know the solution. We know how we are going to take that idea into that final product. And it can be anything from, like we've said before, um, how do we improve um, a scenario within a company? How do we improve finance processes? All the way through to how can we launch a new product into the market? So once we have that illumination, then comes the verification. And the verification process is when we start to focus on the tangible elements. And this is when we may start to do proposals, create business plans. We may even do a prototype or a pilot of the solution so that we can show it to people. And when we show it to people, then they will be able to give us their insights, they can give us some feedback. Um, And this process may take some time because we may do a prototype, share it with an audience, and then they may say, actually, I think we should change this, this, and this. 
then we'll go away, make some amendments, and then we'll come back again. And this is really helpful to continuously improve the prototype that's been created so that when the final product is made, um, that process has already gone through. So those are the four phases um, of the creativity process. So um, it may be when you do it in real life, they may not all happen one after the other. There may be a mixture of different things or some phases may be shorter and some phases may be longer. Um, what I would like for us to do next, um, so that we can all get interactive, is um, I would like for you to use the chat functionality and to showcase to me this product. This is a mobile phone. As well as a mobile phone, it's many other things. So if you can use your chat functionality to share some ideas with me on what new and unique ways you can use to showcase this product, the mobile phone. Please feel free to share your ideas. In the previous sessions, I'm keeping an eye on the chat. In the previous sessions, we had people saying many different things. Um, they said um, that it's um, a gallery or it's a camera or um, it can be used to um, write and create documents. So um, creativity is like looking at the features of a product and selling them in a slightly different way. So um, that's how it can be, um, it can be described. Um, so the next question is um, spend. Uh, so if you if you you've, I'll keep checking the chat so you can um, share your other ideas if you come up with other ideas as we're going through today's session. Um, and um, um, other things we can do is um, some people in previous sessions um, said things like it's um, a, a communication tool. So rather than saying it's a phone, they called it a communication tool. So we can use different words to really describe um, the phone as a product. So that was the creative process that we talked about. The next thing we're going to talk about is the innovation process. And um, in Harvard Business Review, they talk about um, the creative process. And one of the things um, they said in an article is, in reality, for innovation to contribute to a company or a government agency, it needs to be designed as a process from start to deployment. Um, so let's explore that in more detail. Um, so what does um, what is what does it mean to have innovation? So innovation is taking that idea, turning it into an invention, and then finally turning it into that innovation which gets sold and people use that product and pay money for it. So the definition here is innovation can be defined as the creation of a product or into introduction of a process for the first time. Innovation, on the other hand, occurs if someone improves or makes significant contribution to an existing product process or service. Now, it's really important to understand that there are there is an innovation process. And um, if we follow the innovation process, it can be really beneficial for all parties involved, whether that's um, a small company, a startup, um, a large scale, scale company, or when smaller groups of organizations come together. And what the studies have found is that Many organizations, they want to be innovative. 79% of organizations said that innovation was in the top three of their desires and their priorities. However, only four, oh, however, 40 percent of new products and services fail. And this was based on a study that was done by Northeastern University. And what they found is that it's really necessary to have an innovation process. And they've identified three core stages. I've put the link of this article with this slide. So if anyone does want to read the article, then they can they can go and look that article up. 
So the first stage of the innovation process is to do with discovery. This is where we identify the problems. We relate it back to the creative process where we're looking at ideas, we're doing some design thinking, um, we're looking at the problems an organization has, what are some of the challenges they're facing, and then how can we improve those things? And we can use the innovation process to help with that. Um, and then with that goes the prototyping. So once we've understood the landscape and we've understood the scenario of the problem, then we can start doing the development work. And the development work is starting to invest small amounts of money to um, start working on the product that or the service that um, we want to innovate. It's um, looking for suppliers, it's starting to work with different individuals and different departments who can then come together to develop a product which can um, effectively be used and sold in um, either internally to an organization or externally to um, customers, whether that's B2B or B2C. And the final step of that innovation process is the commercialization. So many organizations, um, we come up with new ideas and um, new products and services because we want to commercialize it. There has to be some kind of um, uh, value gained from doing that, whether it's um, improving the way work is done or that um, the product is going to generate an income um, for an organization. So this is where the final product is taken to the market. Um, and also it could be that feedback is given by the market. So often there are many websites which are beta websites because they're still going through that test and that trial phase and they'll ask for feedback and they'll ask for um, insights from people so that then they can go away and, and improve the product and the service. So that was the innovation process and um, there are many articles out there on this topic and um, if it's something that you're interested in really applying in the work that you do and within your organizations um, it's worth having a, having a look um, at that as well. The next um, topic I'm going to be covering is thinking creatively drives innovation and growth. What Albert Einstein said was, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. And um, often um, what happens is that we think of a problem and we focus so much on the problem that we forget that there is actually a solution that needs to be created as well. And uh, many times, um, there are two schools of thought or two types of approaches. Sometimes we're so focused on fixing the problem and we're so focused on why the problem happened and whose fault is it. That's one school of thought. The other school of thought is, OK, there is a problem. What's the solution? How are we going to move forward? And being creative and being innovative is about looking at the solutions. How are we going to solve what's going on? So in the in the next section, again, you should please feel free to use the chat functionality. What do you think are some of the business benefits of thinking creatively? What ideas do you have? I'll keep an eye on the chat again. Um, some of the things that um, it, it could be, some of the benefits could be we save costs, we improve the way work is done, we bring different teams together and we create synergies in our organization and within our team. So there are many benefits of um, working um, or, or working creatively within organizations and within businesses. Um, another question for you, what creative things have you done over the last few months in, in, you, in the things that you do? Feel free to share some ideas. So I'm going to talk about one of my own experiences. Um, as part of some of the 
programs and the training programs that I deliver, um, I'm looking at new ways of um, delivering training, which is more immersive, um, which allows people to have um, a real life and firsthand experience. So one of the things I'm doing is designing a program which could potentially help with that so that it gives a different experience um, to the people who are on the training program. Um, so there are many different um, things that we all do and I'm sure that you have done in the past as well. Um, and it's about thinking in that way that has the benefit. So let's look at how this really benefits organisations. Um, so in, I remember working for um, many companies that I've worked in in the past and um, many times the manager would always say, um, I don't want the problem, I want the solution. Um, think about the solution creatively and um, I want you to think about things differently. So these are some of the things that they would often um, say to us as a team. And um, in the early days of my career, it, um, I always wondered, OK, what does that mean? Why are they saying to think about things in this way? And it's through that experience that I realized that it's about shifting the perspective. It's about looking at things in a different way. And when we do that, the benefits can be really, really powerful for an organization, um, whether it's a large organization or a small organization. And the, the way that we think creatively about a solution could be, how can we change processes? Um, how can we find a solution to a market gap? Where is there something that we know can be improved? So in the chat, someone's um, mentioned Rosaline. Rosaline has said it comes to mind how to create healthy and affordable food. So that that is something which Rosaline uh, may have may has identified, and it could be okay. So what could I do? What ideas and what um, creative solutions can um, she come up with to help with that with that scenario? Um, it could be we look at the way things are being done and how we can improve them. Um, and it's also about looking at where the world is today and where that world is going to be in the future. So rather than only focusing on resolving a current problem with a solution, it could be actually we anticipate that these things may happen in the future. So let's think about those solutions already. Um, how can we engage with our customers? What um, what creative ways exist? So with the pandemic, so many of us are working from home and um, I'm working with a client who works for a very luxury fashion product and um, their clients cannot come to the showroom to see these products. So they have to leverage technology. So every day they have um, Zoom calls or Teams calls or um, um, like they have video calls with their clients. They bring in an expert into a meeting, an online meeting where the expert would talk about the product. And then they use augmented reality to show what that product would look like. So if it's a handbag, how would that handbag look on someone's arm? Um, if it's a car, how would that experience of driving the car be? So we could hear the sound, we can we, we can see the, the shifting of the gears. All of those different things give a different experience. So this is how this organization was able to engage with their customers differently. Um, and then the final one I've got on here is how do we engage with our suppliers? What unique things and what creative things can we do in, in the way that we interact with how we buy from our suppliers? That is also another way in which we can think about solutions from a creative way as well. Creativity and innovation go hand in hand. They um, are or they complement each other, they both um, complete each other. And um, within organizations, um, it's really important to encourage that creative 
process. And um, when organizations create that environment, when they have um, a, um, a building or a space within an office or even using technology to really help ideas generate, then that creativity will drive the innovation. And right now, because we are all working online and we are using video calls more uh, than we did before, then it's it's beneficial to create um, the right environment and um, allow people to share ideas and um, allow people to work together collaboratively as well. Um, so having the right setting drives innovation, whether that's in a physical office or online. And when this is done well, the benefit for the organization is vast. So what are some of those benefits to an organization? So many clients ask um, me or ask our company, um, what are, if we were to be more innovative and more creative, how will we benefit? And the studies show, the evidence shows that when there is greater innovation and creativity, then the benefits are wide scale for organizations and for individuals. So some of the things that can um, happen is that problem solving takes place. And because people start to think differently, they think more on the solution. They have more of a forward mindset. So then they are more um, solution driven. And that gives a creative edge. It gives a creative edge to a team, to a department, to an organization, and then ultimately to an industry. It adds value. So organizations can make money, people can learn and grow. Um, it gives the opportunity for new ideas and new thoughts to emerge through these conversations and through um, this process of sharing ideas. It can bring out new talents. So in my experience, I have found that when the right environment is created and people are given the opportunity to share, to showcase, to express, then suddenly they are given this opportunity to really show their talents. And um, it, it's a really amazing and beautiful thing to see. Um, it creates innovation, it leads to business growth, um, and it can help resolve the challenges which may exist within an organization or even within an industry. Um, it can improve the way that things are done. It drives collaboration and it also leads to efficiency. So really the benefit to organizations is that it's holistic, it's end to end. It can benefit an organization in so many ways from the people, the processes, the systems. And then let's look at how it can then benefit um, um, using a, a real life case study. So um, I'm going the example I'm going to give today is based on um, a well-known online exercise company. Um, and um, what this exercise company has done, they've moved from a, a company that provided um, home-based static um, exercise equipment so like um an exercise bike now um they had that experience and then they started to use video they started to use different types of styles of classes to give um the end user a different experience an experience where they felt that they were cycling in a forest or they were racing on a cycling track. And um, then they started to offer different types of um, classes of different um, levels and um, they had loud music and then they would have trainers um, and teachers giving classes. And um, so what this company has done, it's, it's moved from um, a static product, which is an exercise bike, to becoming um, a technology company where they have thousands of videos that they have available on their website. They've been able to create influencers. Their teachers are now really famous. So we can really look at the ideas that such companies have implemented to, to, to then help um, move us forward in terms of um, how we can grow, how we can be in innovative and how we can um, 
grow our businesses as a result of thinking differently. Please feel free to share any questions that you may have. Um, I'm going to just have a quick look at the chat to see if anyone has said anything. OK, no worries. Um, so the next thing I would like for us to work on together, and this is to do with um, coming up with an idea to um, create a virtual training program. So how can we use um, a, a, a typical course like the one that we have today? How can we use virtual reality to change the experience that we are going to be getting from today's course? What kinds of ideas have you got? I'll just check the chat. Um, so some of the things um, which um, we had in our previous course and also from my own experiences, um, a virtual reality can be really used to take people into the experience. So for example, um, if I was going to do a course on public speaking, I could use virtual reality to go into um, a big auditorium or a big theater and um, people can practice their public speaking and they would have a real experience of how their voice sounds. They will be able to look at the um, the way their voice sounds in different parts of the theater. And what this will give is it will enable them to prepare for a big presentation they may have or even a TED talk or, or something like that. And virtual reality can be used to um, give an experience which is visual, but also aud audio based. So um, it can be really powerful. Um, and um, so that these are the kinds of things which um, we can start to think about differently in, in the work that in the work that we do. So moving on to the next section, which is all about um, fostering creativity and innovation. So within organizations um, and us as individuals, it becomes really important to um, create the mindset of, um, of creativity and innovation. So in previous modules, um, uh, we, we talked about the growth mindset, and that was the module which Ben delivered. And um, the growth mindset is all about um, thinking differently um, and more about learning and growing and developing. So by creating a culture within an organization which focuses and encourages creativity and innovation, it's hugely beneficial for the whole company and also the individuals. Um, so let's look at um, some questions before we move on to the content. To what extent is your organizational setting suitable for creativity? If one is low and 10 is high, um, what would you say is the level of creativity within your organization? I'll just have a look at the chat in case anyone has something that they would like to share. So often people have different views so they and they have different experiences um in an organization it, it is quite important to have um the right setting um a, a lot of collaborative spaces exist to enable creativity and innovation to take place so um depending on the type of organization the size of the organization um there will be different levels of um creativity and different levels of setting that's available as well um, and the next question was what things do you think are important to foster creativity and innovation what do you think needs to be in place within within a company? I'll have a quick look at the chat. Um, this could be anything from the right environment, the right support from management and leadership. Um, it could be having more flexible time because people think differently um, when it comes to creativity. They might think in different ways and at different times of the day. So these are some of the things which can be done from an organizational cultural perspective. 
So let's look at this in a bit more detail. So how can organizations drive cre creativity and innovation? So um, they can start to change the language rather than talking about things such as, I can't do this, that won't work, or we've tried this already. Replace these words with something more positive. I will attempt to look for a solution or um, I will go away and investigate some ideas. So straight away, we are moving from a negative mindset towards more of a positive mindset. Um, the other thing that organizations can do, they can start to provide staff with challenges so that it encourage staff to become more creative, giving them something a little bit difficult to do that then they can go away and uh, trial and test and, and do some research on, um, provide the right physical setting. So we've talked about that already, which is ensuring that the physical environment encourages um, this way of thinking and this way of working. Um, it's also about rewarding innovation and encouraging it. If the culture is supportive of innovation um, and creativity, then by encouraging it, it would uh, enable more people to think in that way as well. And it's also about having the right mix of people. We need to have a different combination of different people coming together so that they can share ideas, they can support each other, and different people bring different skills. So when they come together as a team, then they can support each other in greater detail. Um, it's about challenging assumptions. Um, often, if we all accept one answer the first time, then we're not really challenging ourselves. So by challenging assumptions and thinking differently, we can bring up new ideas and, and new ways of thinking and working. It's important to have a clear goal and a clear vision. Um, and it's about reviewing what didn't work. So often they will, they will there may be failures and it's actually okay to not get something right the first time. It's how are we going to learn from it? Many products that we have on the market today, many websites, they when they first started, there was something quite different. And through the evolution and through learning and through uh, making mistakes, they were able to rebrand or reposition that product or service differently. Um, there's a really great um, tool or a method which can be used, and that's Edward de Bono's thinking hats method. And it's it's a method which each, say there's a team of five people, each individual would wear a different color hat. And depending on the hat, someone would be a manager, someone would be the creative person, someone may be the financial person. And then we take turns to wear different hats so that we can then understand different people's perspectives and different people's challenges. So that's the things that organizations can do. Um, now let's look at what individuals can do. So when it comes to um, individuals, you and I and um, other people starting to develop our own creativity skills, um, we can start to do this by spending time to reflect, think and be. It could be um, you take um, a piece of paper and you want to write down some ideas or you want to go for a walk and suddenly those ideas come to you. So this is spending time and giving yourself time to reflect. And that once that's happened, it's getting into flow. This is where we're so focused on an idea that we forget to have lunch. Um, the day started at nine and suddenly it's 6 p.m. and we've been so focused on the work that we're doing. Um, and that's being in flow. It means that we are um, in in um, essence of the work that we're doing. And it's, a, it's like a beautiful experience. Um, then we start... The other things we can do is we can shift the focus um, of thinking to gain new perspectives. So if we have an idea, we can look at the idea from the perspective of a customer. We can think of the idea from the perspective of a supplier or from a, um, a government perspective or from a bank's perspective. So when you look at things from different perspectives, then you can have different focus um, and different ideas as well. 
Um, one of the other things that's really important is to avoid um, a negative sentiment about a situation. So if something's not going right or something seems like a challenge, rather than focusing on the problem, let's go into that solution mode and focus on the solution and how we can fix things rather than um, looking at what went what went wrong and why. We can start to challenge assumptions. We can prepare to make mistakes. If we if we are prepared that mistakes will happen, then we're able to handle them better when they occur. Continuous learning is really important and um, for our own growth and also for how we approach creativity and innovation as well. And um, after we've thought about those ideas, it's great to think about ideas and have these amazing ideas in our minds. What we have to start doing is implementing the creative process that we talked about at the start of the session and the innovation process to move from thinking to start taking action, to start doing things which will really show the world and really show our colleagues the innovation and the creative ideas that we have and how we can move them forward. Um, so those were the key themes that I wanted to cover in today's session. If anyone has any questions or would like to share anything, then please feel free to do so. Um, so, um, Kayo, I'll hand back over to you. I would like to thank everyone for joining today's session. Um, it's been great spending time with you. And if you have any questions after the session or if you would like to connect, then you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to switch to Portuguese. Um, let me just find my slides. Perfect. Bem, pessoal, é, primeiro eu queria agradecer a participação de vocês. É, eu vi que tem muitas pessoas que entraram e saíram ao longo da transmissão. E esse conteúdo vai estar gravado, então se você está assistindo isso, é, você está vendo a gravação desse encontro. É, aqui em São Paulo a gente tem uma comunidade do Reactor. Se vocês quiserem fazer parte e acompanhar os nossos encontros, por favor, só fazer, só seguir e procurar por nossa comunidade no Meetup. É, eu vi que a gente não teve perguntas e respostas até então, mas é, eu queria convidar vocês a responderem brevemente, seja agora ou no, na gravação, a nossa pesquisa de satisfação, a gente passa em todos os eventos, para acessar essa pesquisa é só se dirigir ao link ak.ms barra reactor traço pesquisa, Logo, quando você acessar a pesquisa, vai perguntar o código do evento que você está assistindo. O código desse evento particular é o 12918. E eu só tenho a agradecer a participação de vocês e a gente se vê numa próxima oportunidade. É, Monica, I think that this is it. Thank you so much for today and I hope to see you another day or on LinkedIn, right? Yes, definitely. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Kaya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.